Hi everybody. So hopefully you've already seen our reading for enjoyment of teacup. So as I mentioned, with each of those reading for enjoyment experiences, there would also be a reading for understanding and learning. And that is to help us use to apply the strategies and techniques that authors use so seamlessly it seems into our own reading but also our own writing because we know that they are intimately connected the two processes of reading and writing. So our learning intention for today's lesson or our um, reading for understanding and learning would be for us to develop a better understanding of the literary devices that authors use to create layers of meaning within the text. In particular, Rebecca Young has used metaphor and personification in this text. So we're going to explore those. So they will come within the success criteria. So if you're able to understand and identify what a metaphor is, and how Rebecca Young has used it within her text, and likewise, how she has used personification within the text to create layers of meaning. So if you're able to identify those within the text, and then possibly, um, if you're really clever, you might be able to start to use those literary devices in your own writing, but these things take time. So before we begin, I always like to engage your prior knowledge in the learning. So let's turn on our brains and connect to the part of the brain where we already have information stored that is going to help us understand this text at a much deeper level. So my question for you to engage your prior knowledge is to think about those feelings and strong connections that you have to your home or a special place. If you have a thinking partner at home, it might be a brother or sister or a parent who's got some spare time, I'd like you to turn to them and have a conversation. Otherwise, if you're working solo at home because mum and dad are busy working from home as well, maybe you can send your friend a text message or you'd be able to send them some, through some other um, digital device platform where you can share with them what you already know about this topic. So my question for you, in whatever environment you are in at the moment, working from home, I want you to think about a time that you had to leave your home or your safe place. And I want you to think and explore how that made you feel. What sensations did you experience? So I'm going to give you some time to think about that and to remember that when you're reading this text. Now, before we begin reading the text, as I mentioned, our um, learning intentions and success criteria were linked to the literary devices that authors use within their texts. So we're looking specifically at metaphor, and a metaphor is a figure of speech which makes an implicit, implied, or hidden comparison between two things that are unrelated but share some common characteristics. In other words, a resemblance of two contradictory or different objects is made based on a single or common characteristic. Now, if that's not clear to you at the, this point in time, we're going to explore that through some very careful questioning in the text. Likewise, we also notice that Rebecca Young uses personification in her text. Now, personification is a figure of speech in which something that's not alive is given lifelike attributes. So something that we know that is not living or breathing is brought to life through careful word selection. So we're going to explore that within the text. So let's go, teacup. You can see there's some beautiful 
pencil drawings in this text. Once there was a boy who had to leave home and find another. In his bag, he carried a book, a bottle and a blanket. In his teacup, he held some earth from where he used to play. Look at that mirror image. So my question for you is one for the illustrator. Why do you think the illustrator has used the reflections so strongly on this page? It's almost like the main character is standing on a sheet of glass. I want you to continue to think about this throughout the story. Could this, in fact, be a metaphor for something? Some, day, the, some days the sea was kind, gently rocking him to sleep. On this page, I want you to consider the use of personification. Why would the author choose to personify the sea in this lifelike way of rocking him to sleep? What additional understanding does it bring to the text? Continue to think about that while we read the next page. Some days the sea was bold and the boy held tightly onto his teacup. But also consider those words really carefully with the combination of the really strong image of the ocean here. Again, we see personification being used in this text, but it's in stark contrast to the image we saw on the previous page. If we flick back and have a look, the ocean's so still and we can see the creatures that live beneath it. And yet on the same, the next page, we've got a completely different image. How do you think the author wants us to see the sea or see the ocean? And why do you think the author and illustrator would want us to consider the ocean in this manner? Some days shone bright on an endless sea of white. The text here is very lyrical, it's sing-songy, it's almost rhyming. But yet the underlying message of the text is a very deep one. Why do you think the author would choose to present this information in such a sing-song lyrical way? But yet the underlying message is so deep. Think about who the intended audience is. Other days were so dark that the boy longed for the stars. You can see him there standing isolated, viewing the passing storm. Every day he watched the horizon for a speck that he could follow until it grew into something glorious. 
but there was no sign of land. I think the illustrator's view here is an intriguing one. If you have a look, we've taken a very landscape view and even the selection of putting the image of the child in the boat there in accompaniment with the text underneath it. Why do you think the author and illustrator chose to present the information in this way? What do they want you to think about the horizon? What do you want them to think about that there was no sign of land? As the boy stared at the sky, an albatross, albatross cut across the blue. The way it dipped and dived reminded him of flying kites back home. The taste of salt on his lips reminded him of the sea breeze whistling through his favourite tree. If you look very carefully up there, it's a really interesting perspective of the tree here and you can see the boat that has landed up in its branches. On this page, I've got a question for the illustrator that I want you to consider. Why has the illustrator chosen to present the tree from this perspective where we're looking at it like we're lying on the ground, looking up towards the branches? This is one of my favourite pages. The way the whales called out to each other reminded him of how his mother used to call him for tea. Do you think the child found an element of comfort in the whale's call? And the way the clouds slowly swam into view reminded him of how things can change with a whisper. It's a very surrealist type image here. Seeing these images of these animals completely out of their natural environment. Think the author is getting us to think about here especially with the choice of wording can change with a whisper with quite a dark ominous image what's the author's intention the boy awoke to something new over trembling seas it grew and grew and grew what you can see here close up and then even in the boy in the boat an interesting perspective interesting that the Words are carefully being replicated by the images. It's almost a sense of hope. 